Welcome to this session Techies. My name is Shyokish Kumar. In this session, we are going to talk about Vagrant Provisioners. In particular, we will be talking about Ansible Provisioner. This session will be quick introduction to Ansible Provisioner, how we can configure it and basic lab. So first of all, uh, what is Ansible Provisioner? We all know Ansible is a automation tool. The Vagrant Ansible Provisioner allows you to provision the guest using Ansible Playbook by executing Ansible Playbook from the Vagrant host. So that's something if you want to automate the installation process inside the Vagrant guest. In that case, you can use Provisioner. As I mentioned in last video, you can use uh, Shell Provisioner or you can use some automation tool provisioner such as uh, Puppet, Ansible, Chef, Salt. So these are options. So what are the prerequisites for uh, using Ansible provisioner? Basically, you need a host with Vagrant installed, VirtualBox installed. VirtualBox is basically a provider and a provisioner. In this case, I'm using Ansible provisioner. In case you are not aware how to install Vagrant, and VirtualBox or you are not sure what setting needs to be done you can refer uh, the below videos which I recorded earlier on Ansible and Vagrant uh, and VirtualBox so I will share uh, the video link in the description of uh, this particular video so you can take copy paste the link and search for those videos or here uh, you can go to YouTube just search uh, with my name Yogesh space Vagrant it will bring this particular page which is on how to set up Vagrant and VirtualBox and if you search with keyword uh, Yogesh Ansible installation then it will bring you to this particular video which is on Ansible installation and lab setup so that's something pre-requesty before you start playing with Ansible as a provisioner so now one question may be in your mind, uh, why to use Ansible or any provisioner over the shell provisioner? Basically shell provisioner is such as uh, shell commands which you can execute uh, inside your guest machine or that can be a shell script also. But what is the benefit of using uh, a provisioner which is basically automation tool? So I will talk about Ansible this time. Ansible can do parallel run of the playbook on the multiple hosts. Let's uh, take example, you are provisioning multiple vagrant guest machines. In that case, you can do parallel run to configure multiple machines at the same time. Next benefit, Ansible is able to support whole stack configuration. It means uh, if you have to install web server, database server, or let's say LAMP stack, or a simple example. So you can use Ansible. Ansible can create database for you. Ansible can uh, add database users. Ansible can uh, do other configuration, which shell scripting can't do. So that's another benefit. Ansible is able to template the configuration file, whereas shell scripts are not. We all know about Ansible, like uh, we can uh, use templates in Ansible, which is uh, basically to use uh, files which got uh, variable data, which you can pass or Ansible can get the information. But with shell script, that's not possible. Ansible can be source controlled. That's another benefit. If you're using shell provisioner and you want to do a big stuff let's say you want to configure lamp stack in that case you have to learn scripting but if you're using ansible provisioner you don't need to learn any scripting language basically you have to just know the yml formatting and you have to write the modules or basically tasks which particular module you want to use what is your end goal that's it for that uh, basically for ansible there is no scripting knowledge required let's say big benefit so next thing how ansible provisioner works when ansible is defined as provisioner in the vagrant file it makes the use of playbook mentioned in the provisioner config to configure the target machine so whatever the playbook you specify in the vagrant file ansible executes 
sorry not ansible basically vagrant execute that ansible playbook on the guest machine so i'm repeating basically vagrant execute the ansible playbook on the guest machine so how the process works first vagrant creates inventory file in the base directory of vagrant machine let's suppose you want or you have created a vagrant guest directory when you do vagrant in it with all the required configuration you specify ansible as provisioner when you first time boot up that machine using vagrant up it automatically creates a directory in the base directory of vagrant guest machine which contains a inventory file then vagrant executes the ansible playbook with the options defined in the vagrant file ansible make use of vagrant user which is the default user for the communication with the the target machine or you can say target guest in my last video i have mentioned default user is vagrant and password is vagrant uh, for the guest operating systems if you got some custom machine which you are using some different user in that case you can uh, define your config in that way for the authentication mc will make use of ssh key based authentication of the vagrant user for communicating with the guest next thing uh, which is important uh, vagrant user that got uh, root level sudo access on the guest machine but uh, with ansible when you want to specify that vagrant can become root you have to specify that in the ansible play playbook file so that's something i will demonstrate when i'm giving technical session All right now i'm only telling theory so uh, this is the sample like how vagrant inventory file looks like when you run vagrant up you can see this is the path i am in this particular directory which is uh, ansible guest directory and path is dot vagrant provisioner ansible inventory vagrant underscore ansible underscore inventory this is the basically file you can see uh, it is using loopback ip and uh, the custom port 2222 as i mentioned whenever ansible sorry whenever vagrant machine comes up it checks which ssh ports are already used means the netted port then it automatically picks a free port uh, and update this particular file it is using vagrant as ssh user you can see here this is automatically generated i haven't added or updated this file manually then this is the private key we all know this is a path of uh, vagrant private key it is making use of that particular private key for communication with guest in passwordless way how we can uh, or we have to define ansible as provisioner basically in vagrant file you have to do this particular stuff config.vm.provision ansible here it means ansible is provis provisioner now to ansible ansible.playbook is equal to playbook so whatever your playbook name you can uh, define here your playbook name may be web server.yml lamp.yml playbook.yml or whatever whatever name you have to define here after that and which mean uh, this provisioner configuration is uh, ended here so one question may be in your mind where you have to keep playbook.yml file uh, if you don't specify any path vagrant considers that you have kept the playbook.yml file in the same directory where vagrant file exists or present so that's something in case you want to use some custom path let's say you want to use etc ansible playbook.yml this is a complete path to file then you can hard code you can say slash etc slash ansible slash playbook.yml but it's good idea to keep your playbooks inside uh, vagrant guest based dir directory one another thing you may be thinking in case uh, you got a role instead of a simple playbook then how you can define let's say you got role with the name role then you can specify role slash whatever path to playbook so you can continue in that way so that's something easy to keep this uh, demo easy i have kept the playbook.yml file in the base directory of uh, vagrant guest so uh, this is something when you run vagrant up uh, how it runs 
you can see here I got index.y HTML, playbook.yml and the vagrant file. In vagrant file I have already defined how like vagrant will use Ansible provisioner and uh, with uh, this configuration I'm configuring my target machine as a web server. So index.html is something which I have uh, created with some dummy data. So one once you run vagrant up it to the basic stuff after that at the end it run the provisioner you can see here running provisioner ansible and this is the playbook basically you can see all these are playbooks stuff so whatever you define in your playbook that will get executed so that's something uh, which is very useful next thing uh, let's say you have done your one time configuration but after that you want or you have uh, made some changes in your playbook how you can re-execute that playbook on your target machine. So simply cd to the path uh, of the vagrant box dir. Uh, for example, this is the path. After that, run Ansible playbook with the playbook name. It automatically attempt to write the playbook or run the playbook on the guest machine. So let's do some practical stuff where I can give you demo. Whatever I have just... Uh, discussed with you guys theoretically so this is a CentOS 7 machine uh, which is configured as a vagrant base server and I have already installed uh, vagrant and uh, virtualbox let me quickly show you what is it And I have also installed Ansible. So this is Ansible. This is the configuration file. Okay, now I'm in directory where I'm going to create a vagrant box. So this is the directory path. I named it Ansible dash VAG means vagrant. Sure. And uh, I have already run Vagrant in it with CentOS 7 image. Now let me show you how I defined Ansible as provisioner. I'm just editing uh, Vagrant file. In case uh, you haven't uh, watched my previous video or you don't know concept of Vagrant file, please uh, watch the previous videos as I mentioned uh, because that will be giving you idea what is Vagrant file, how the configuration is defined. I'm not going to repeat all things because there is separate video I've recorded for that purpose. Okay, this is a Vagrant file. Like I have already discussed these options. I'm using CentOS 7 uh, VM box and this is the provisioner section. You can see here I have defined use Ansible as provisioner. This is the playbook like in current directory search for or look for playbook.yml and execute it on the target machine when system is booting up. So that's easy. Now let me show you what I got in my playbook. In my playbook I have defined all servers become yes become method sudo. So this is something I was talking like we have to define that uh, vagrant user can become root using uh, ansible so this is something uh, important always keep in mind if you want to run command as root you have to specify in your uh, playbook that any user can become root and not any user vagrant user basically in this example after that i go to normal task to install http package then copy the index.html if you see src is equal to index.html which mean uh, index.html is present in the uh, directory where I have kept the vagrant file so default uh, guest virtual box path basically and this is the destination this need to be permission after that notify this particular service or uh, the handler then create a rule for Apache which is IP table rule then save those rules and start the HTTP servers and this is basically handler so this is very easy you can refer my ansible videos which will give you idea how to define the playbook how ansible work so and let me quickly show you index.html file also which is very basic one for this demo i'm only using title like this is ansible provisioner demo and in text i go this is quick demo how ansible provisioner work this is web page on vagrant guest and is ansible config okay this 
okay this was something uh, which I have configured so let me give you demo how Ansible provisional works so simply I will run vagrant up vagrant init have already done vagrant up you guys know like it mean uh, we are bringing the vagrant guest machine up with the configuration defined in vagrant file and uh, following the default configuration it will run the provisional also so right now it is importing the base In my vagrant file, I have uh, defined that port 80 on guest is uh, forwarded uh, with this particular port. I have done port forwarding because I'm running the Apache server, HTTPD. By default, it will be listening on port 80 on the guest. On the host side, it will be port 8080. So that is port forwarding I have set up. You can see uh, this is port for SSH, which is forwarded uh, with this particular configuration. On my host side, port number is 2222, which is forwarded uh, with port 22 on the guest. So, so far it's going good. It may take a couple of uh, minutes to completely boot up. Now, Vagrant is updating the image, basically installing the latest packages uh, update. Uh, you can see here now it is uh, basically Vagrant is running the Ansible playbook so it will run all the tasks on this machine which are defined in playbook so it is running first task as of now so it just finished and our provisional worked perfectly all the tasks completed successfully none of task failed so in this way you can easily configure Vagrant guest machines using a provisioner. In our example, we used Ansible provisioner. So now let's check whether web server is running on the guest or not. So one way from here, I can run dlinks 127.0.0.1 over port uh, 8080. okay it is giving error connection refused okay i made mistake uh, let me exit from here it need to be 127.0.0.1 colon 88 it mean i'm saying x try to connect this particular server over port 8080 and this is our port forwarding you can see here this was the demo text which we got in the index.html file by Grant and Simple Provisioner and this is something which we got. It means web server is running on target machine. Let me quit from here. Let me quickly log into the guest machine. In guest machine I can also show you that uh, it is running by Grant SSH. Let me become root quickly. I can do the CTL status HTTPD. Sorry, it is saying not a service system CTL. Sorry, you can see service is running, and here I don't think I got e link. Uh, install it. So I'm in server now here I have to run e-links and localhost IP I can specify if I want to run or I can use the netted IP whatever netted IP this code over port 80 here it will be port 80 because I'm inside server now if I have to access it from the base machine which is vagrant base machine I have to use the port 8080 which is I have defined in the vagrant file so our web server is running so that's something and simple provisional worked now let's do our next task let me exit from the vagrant guest 
now i am on uh, a green demo machine which is our base machine now let me show you how inventory looks like if i do ls minus l you will see these three files which we have configured and created let me do list the hidden files you can see this particular directory which is created by vagrant where vagrant uh, stores all the configuration about particular vagrant guest so provisioners because i am going to demonstrate provisional configuration and civil inventory so this is my current directory now let me do this minus l this is the inventory file let me quickly show you inventory file you can see here this is generated by vagrant default ansible ssh host this is a particular ip access it over port 2222 use user vagrant for ansible ssh private key is this particular path which is ansible's uh, private key so that's something now let's suppose you have to run this playbook manually because uh, just couple of minutes before vagrant ran this playbook for us let's say we have updated our playbook and we have to run it manually so what we can do in that case let me quickly show you let's say i'm editing the playbook here i am adding a new package edition for example So here I am not giving it any number. Install latest version of let's say install KSH. So or any package whatever you want. I'm just giving you demo. Let's say we have updated our playbook. Let's quickly set host key checking to false in the Ansible configuration file. For that I can simply vi etc ansible ansible.cfg which is the default file. Let me search for host key. Okay, uh, it is commented now. Let me uncomment it. So it is set to false now. Let me try to run playbook. You can see it is running playbook now. It is checking Apache. Now it is installing KSH, which we just modified. It means in that way, you can rerun the playbook uh, with the updated data. So that's something uh, I was trying to demonstrate. If you updated your playbook, you want to run it. Only you can update uh, host key checkings to false or you can remove the entry from known underscore host file. That's another way. Whatever way you are more comfortable, there is no issue. Vagrant is uh, not a, I can say production ready. It is only used by developers. So there is no risk according to me to disable the host key checking. But again, uh, follow whatever your setup recommendations or your enterprise requirements so guidelines so that's it in this session guys uh, if you have any query any suggestion or any feedback just uh, post a comment on my youtube channel thank you